Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> Welcome to the Ranting Raven Podcast. It's your girl, Pink Lee, and I have here... Any G. And your boy, Too Cocky, Dre, K. Mr. A.K.A. Mr. Keep It Cocky, A.K.A. Mr. Rebel Some Feather. So we're going to tap into words of wisdom. So how we usually, what we usually do here on Ranting Raven, we usually kind of go back. We start, we start with words of wisdom. We start on a positive note. We go back and kind of tap into uh, previous words of, or the up and coming words of wisdom. But now we're going to tap and start from the beginning. So we're going to tap all the way back into episode one. And when I say this is old, when y'all see the link to this, it's so old. It's from 2022, um, but we're going to get into it. So um, the first one was actually trust your gut, right? Mm. So it was trust, trust your gut, trust, trust your instincts. And basically the episode, it's a very, this is before they got a little longer. So this is back when they were like under two minutes, right? And um, it's a very quick little, little reminder of, to trust your instincts because a lot of times I feel like we let fear anxiety other pe- outside opinions um and all these things like kind of distort our brain to where we can't trust ourselves mm. and then also sometimes the way we may be moving like when we're moving untr- untrustworthy to other people then we're not going to trust ourselves as well Correct. so that's another thing we have to be real with ourselves and make sure that we're moving correctly because if you already look at yourself like oh i like the way i did that why well, keep why well, keep doing you're not going to trust yourself because you yeah. can't even trust yourself to do things for yourself or around other people that you love or whatever. So you're definitely not going to be able to trust yourself. So we want to be moving in a way that's conducive for our trust with ourselves to be like locked in. Like we need to be, it needs to be like that. What do y'all think? Y'all agree? Y'all have any thoughts? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, you, you want to go first? Or I, no, 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 no. You good, like you good, you good, you good, you good. No, you I, I feel like, um, I mean, that's definitely important. I think people be scared to try also because they feel like they're going to fail. And I yeah. think that, you know, you're not really going to learn something. I mean, <laughs> listen, if I'm being honest, shit, I just banged out today in a car. You know what I mean? God, first, ac- first accident is crazy today. Um, and I remember somebody telling me, man, you ain't, you, 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 you get experience. You know, that's how you get, that's how you gain experience. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn, for real? You know, um, I mean, everybody go through little things, but that's just an example of what I mean by how, you know, um, you can't be afraid to, you know, put your best foot forward. And, you know, sometimes, man, you're going, you know, mistakes going to happen, things happen, but, you know, don't let that stop you from, you know, don't let that keep you in the house. Don't be, don't be the, don't be the stoop boy of Hey Arnold. You know what I mean? He ain't, he ain't, afraid to lead a stoop. Yeah, he ain't want to lead a stoop, man. You don't you don't want to be that person, you know? So, you know, just make sure you go out there and do what you can. Yeah, definitely. Um, to piggyback off of that, I actually agree with both of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely all about just jumping off the porch, basically. You know, like, um, uh, don't play it safe. Everybody is uh, content with playing it safe, and... You know, we need not to be content, you know, because cause being content, you'll miss a lot of fucking opportunities. Mm-hmm. Me, myself, I've, I, I've experienced that on so many levels. I have experienced that so many times, whereas, though, I found myself being content in one spot, and I fucked up, and I missed out on opportunities. Like, I'll tell you how content I was. I was content at working at Jiffy Loop before, and me fucking around being content working there, I fucked up working as an EMS, doing fucking, you know, ambulance type shit. So it's like you can be content and fuck up a great opportunity. So don't do that. Jump off the porch and just do it. Yeah. But you got to trust yourself to be able to jump off the porch and do it. Even if you don't trust yourself, jump. But you're not (laughs) going to jump if you don't trust yourself. If you don't have... Certain people still will, though. But I feel like if you jump... So I feel like this is how I... This is why I feel like that, right? I feel like... You trust yourself when you trust your plan, right? When you have a game plan put together, you trust it, you believe in it, right? So if, if you're jumping with no plan, then you're jumping to suicide. You're jumping to your death. That's why I say it like that. But, I feel like you got to have a little game plan to get to where you but to, what get to about, that point. But what about the motherfuckers who don't? What about the people who don't jump to their death? And they just be like, you know what? They're I'm going to just jump in a million. without no plan, and I'm going to just see what happens. I'm going to just, they call it rolling the dice. No, I feel like rolling the we're dice is betting tonight. on yourself. No, we're, we're gonna do it. We we have to do it every time. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do it. We have to. We have to. We have to. We're going to. We have to. 
I'm gonna let, cause guess what? Cause guess what? I'm the one who's gonna say my piece and Dre is the same way. That's why we're friends. But we gonna have this conversation out. Now like I said, say no. People know, honestly, I really feel like people who don't plan if you don't what is it? Uh, plan like if you don't, if you don't plan, plan if, if you don't if you fail to plan, plan you, you plan, plan to, to fail. fail. Right, that one. That I thing. actually and, and what you're saying is right because I I, I do a a, I, do, I do a lot of reading <laughs> and one of the books I'm reading is the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Yes, I have one an audio of, and one of the laws is playing all the way to the end. And even if you don't I, I think I think y'all both got good points, but I think what's important is because like I talked to I talk to my nephew about this all the time, right? Um about finding his passion. Like, my passion is music. So, he off the porch and he around, but he don't necessarily, you know, I guess it's like, do you have a passion for something? Like, what do you what do you genuinely love to do? And I think that's a perfect example of him just kind of being out here. Like, he, he moving around. Like, he not, you know what I mean? Like, he, he good, but it's also just like that, like, where, where is my passion at? You know what I'm saying? And I think without him having that, it kind of, you, you kind of, it kind of makes you stagnant in life. Cause that's, that's what, facts. you know what I mean? That, that's what really make you scared to even want it. Cause you like, damn, like where I'm gonna go? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like which way I'm gonna, yeah. you don't know up from down. Like if you know, I at least gotta, if I could just take this street down, I could, I know I'm gonna be good at, at least until I get home. You know what I mean? But if you ain't got no direction, it's just kind of like, not only that, purpose as well, right? Because yeah. when we find our passion, we find purpose within our passion. Yeah. And if you don't have purpose in your day-to-day -day life, then that's when your life begins to fail. That's when you become, like you said, complacent and things mm -hmm. of that nature because exactly. you don't have anything to look forward to. And the biggest thing they say about the difference between people who are, like, depressed and the people who are depressed and suicidal is hope. It's something to look forward to. Once you have something, if you have nothing to look forward to, that is the easiest way to 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 to, to um, oh I can't say it, but um, to uh, if you don't have any hope, it is the easiest way to want to unalive yourself, right? You sure. know, it, if you don't have anything to look forward to, you're more than likely going to let those thoughts overtake you. If you can find the smallest thing, like dang, I know tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and my favorite show gonna be on. Something, anything, mm -hmm. anything to look forward to. I, I mean, obviously, there's, like, everything is different tiers, but I'm just saying, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's the biggest difference. So I, I, I truly, I, I agree with both of you on that one. But, right. yeah, it's just a lot with that. But um, we're going to move on to our, our second topic. So I already know, Dre, this one, I, after, so it wasn't, like, it wasn't specifically for you, but after I read it over and thought about it, I said, dang. <laughs> I said, I don't know how you going to take this or where you going to go with this one. But the question remains, can you be friends with your ex? Can you, can you, can you, can you? Y'all want me to go first <laughs> with this one? I go first with this one. Whoever. It doesn't so, matter. Um, yes, I do feel like you can be friends with your ex. Um, I'm actually friends with a lot of my ex. I'm not going to lie. Like, with a lot of my ex, I'm actually, like, really good friends Case in point, um, I'm going to say yesterday, I was talking to one of my ex in um, my DM because, you know, she voted for me on the, um, the hot box jump. And uh, she was like, you know, being still that, you know, like you was my boyfriend back when I was like 13, the fact that we still cool, it's like I appreciate stuff like that. And I said, yeah, with me, it's all love. Like, with any of my exes, it's, it's all love. I don't care how bad it may have ended, we can still get cool and like, to like the sun degree. Now, the only person that I'm not cool with is my recent ex. And that's by her design. She has a lot of Satan in her heart, I feel like. So, you not know. Satan. <laughs> so, you know, that that's where that comes from. But me, I yes, I feel like you can be friends with an ex. And you can be friends with an ex without any extra activities going on. That's very easy. <laughs> just the way he hit it. Yo, yo, just the way that you started and hit it was like oh, oh. I mean you know <laughs> like, let me choose my words okay. I mean I, I think you can but I think it depends on like the dynamic right I mean mm. like I mean I had a situation where like me and an ex we had a little falling out okay. and then a couple years later we came up on each other radar again mm. we cool but then it was you know, she see me out doing my thing, 
and she started feeling some type of way. But I'm like, dang. I after a while? Friend. After a couple years. But it's funny because it was it was the it was the other way around a couple years prior when, you know, I'm like, damn, like, you know, I'm trying, you know, maybe, you know, rekindle things, make things work. And she was kind of on a different path. A couple years later, we, re, you know, we rekindle. I mean, we cross paths and she see I'm out here doing my thing. And it's like, but did y'all rekindle? No, no. We didn't, man. I, I feel like so. Yeah, that's way different from when you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it, I think it's one of those situations where, you know, um, it all depends on you know how much damage was truly done. You know what I mean? Because mm, some things, yeah. it's sometimes you might do something that might trigger something from somebody, man, and they mm -hmm. might, you know, it might they might never, you know, look at you the same. You know, so I, I think it all depends on how much damage was done in the situation. I think that's what determines if you can actually be friends with somebody or not. Sure. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree with you there. I also feel like um, a better question is, I know that people can, but should they be, right? Mm. I think that's what it comes down to because sometimes I feel like if when you're friendly with your ex, like you said, feelings are coming back because you guys are being friendly. You might hang out or talk or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then as feelings come back, you think, hey, we can give this a second try. Yeah. And then the second try ends up worse than the first one. See, right? Now, right? And, so and that's, that's why you said it depends on how far y'all take it. Right. Because I've been friends with my ex, but not actually. Well, you know what? I have went out with one. No, I, I can still go out with one to this day. And... So okay, I feel you. I feel you. You know what I mean? I just think that it, I think it could. It, it all depends. Like right, every situation is different. But I just find that like like most of my exes, I guess like, we're cool. Like there's no beef for most of them. But it's not like I'm gonna hit them up. Like yeah, what you doing? Hit, let's hit the bar or like what you doing? Whatever, whatever. And like but even I was like besides my relationship, even if I wasn't in a relationship, I still wouldn't be like oh yeah, let's just go hang out because that's for lying. what? It's you know what I mean? No, for it's what? Just I feel no like love it's loss. Yeah, yeah it's, that's it's, all. Yeah, it's just like it is what it is. You stay over here, I stay over Man, here, teams. and life goes on. I feel like when you, when sometimes, like I said, like I know people who have like who are together for a long. And sometimes people feel like they get back together because they feel like they just should, right? Oh, we should just do it. And it's like there's no, there's nothing That's behind wild. that. They tried everything it's wild. Else. They people, explored out people there. always say, oh, we have history, yeah. or or people, other people outside was, oh, you I guys have so that, much history. I was a young boy. You know, people would be like, oh yeah, you have so much history. You guys should work it out. You should work it out. You guys have so much history. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Put it in drive. Yeah, no, we. No, it's parked. We're not spending no blocks. It's parked. It's shut down. It's booted. <laughs> it's booted. It's over. No, it's impounded. There you go. It's impounded, impounded. right? Impounded. So we, it's impounded, y'all. So we are going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we are going to get into Rachel Dolezal and all her shenanigans. Stay locked in. We'll be right back, y'all. We're about to get into the next segment of the night. We are about we are about to get into Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> Rachel Dolezal, right? Um, for those who do not know, that name sounds gangster, Dolezal. Yeah, her new name actually. We're gonna say that's her former name. She recently changed her name to um, uh, to uh, Nietzsche Amare Diallo. Which, <laughs> um, yes, she recently changed her name to <laughs> Nietzsche Amare Diallo. Wow. And she did this um, due to the fact of her wanting to be, you know, what she identifies as, which is black. She is a white woman. Um, she has white parents. She was the head of the, double, the NAACP, and I believe this was 2017. She got caught up. So she basically tried to sue her brother for sexually abusing her younger sister. And in the midst of all that, her parents finally decided to come out and say, hey, you know, she's trying, she's a liar. She's trying to convince you guys that our son sexually abused our adopted daughter. That did not happen. She also is lying about being black. And everybody said, what? Not the kinky hair, not the the the, forward, the curls. You know, she had the kinky kind of curls. She, did she that. had the she had the olive tan, really tan, orangey skin. She did um, that. you know, she had the 
passion for black ac activism and equal rights and civil rights for black folks and she had the whole thing and she, she won worked the ones. Okay. yeah she no she not but, <laughs> <laughs> but she, I was gonna say yeah but she worked her way up she worked her way up to be the president of the NAACP for some years um, and then she got caught up and everything started going downhill so as 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 people were approaching her basically asking her like um like why do you like are you really black and things of that nature because she had some black guy that she was um saying was her dad but it was really just some like her god dad whatever That's so wild. she you know what i mean so she had she had adopted black sons and she was saying oh these are my kids but they're adopted mm, like she went all the way she wants she went all the way she um she um so she was saying a lot of different things in interviews with people, and she said, I identify as black. I'm not white. How do I know? She said, I don't have proof that my parents aren't my parents, but I don't have proof that they are. So how do I know? How do you guys know? I've always, she said, she's always identified with black culture, black people. She's always had this yearning and um, all that whole thing. And so she came out. So, you know, after all this came out, she lost her job, which was president of the NAACP, and she was braiding hair and... Um, <laughs> and doing, damn, I'm so serious. And that makes her so she, black. She was braiding hair and doing welfare scams for oh, money wow. for a while, right? For a while. Okay. And she was also, she wrote a book. It's called uh, Within the Color, something like that. It doesn't matter. We're not supporting her. Um, but yeah, she she wrote a book and she was living off of that. And then come all these all this time later, now she's a teacher. She a op. She's a teacher, right? Along with being a teacher, along with her side hustles, she has started an OnlyFans. Her OnlyFans has been up for a while. I'm not going to lie. She, what we would call thick. So she on there really like, you know, in her little fits, you know what I mean? Flexing her little stuff. She's doing what she's doing. That's also crazy. teaching kids during the day. And so now someone, she went super viral. Someone caught on and now she's fired. So one, I want to know, one, one, I want to know what you guys feel about her and the whole faking to be black thing, right? But I also want to know about what do you guys feel about her being fired because they're only fans? Should teachers be allowed to have only fans or what? Um You wanna go first or you Well I mean yeah 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 you go first. I'm trying I mean, to get in my thoughts. <laughs> they said fake it till you make it. Uh <laughs> she made it. She black now. She going through everything we go through. <laughs> the after effect no um i don't know man i just i think it's crazy uh i feel like people you can't really change who you are at the end of the day uh we can't change who we are you know what i'm saying i feel like it's one of those things you know what i mean own it i don't know what the whole like like what would you try and prove you know what i mean like was it like a uh I don't know. I think it's... Me, go ahead. What you about to say? I was going to say, I, I want to interject here. So, in the 1950s, right? Take a little history lesson. In the okay. 1950s, there was a man, I forget his his name, um, but he did an experiment called Black Light, and, it, and he wrote a book about it, and I think later on they made it a movie. It was called Black Like Me. And he was a white man who did, like, for the time, whatever skin technology for the time that they had, like, melanin shots, melanin pills, whatever. Mm. And um, he literally changed, turned his skin brown. Right, mm -hmm. he turned his skin, his skin brown because he this wanted to. This real. This really happened. This really happened. <laughs> it was a real life experiment. He wrote a book about his experience called Black Like Me. Uh, if you look it up, it should come up. It's, I read it as a as a adolescent, so I, it's it, it really blew my mind Excuse that someone me. would do this. So he so she he read the good books. Yeah, I had to. My mom don't play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he like turned himself black and then would go in, like, white in his normal, tried to do his normal routine as a white man in, yeah. in his black skin. And he realized, he said, with doing this experiment, I thought I would see how black people are treated as second-class citizens. But what I actually ended up seeing is that they're treated like, um, like, basically, I forget how he worded it, but basically, like, the scum under my shoe. Like, they're, they're treated so much more worse than I even thought. Like, wow. Like, we really yeah. treat human beings like this. So, you know, uh, he really went into it to kind of see what it would be like to be black and, and to have that experience. And just out of curiosity, is it really as bad as they say? That sort of thing. But he really yeah. went over off the off the deep end with this. So my thing is, I mean, I like, I like instead of asking, instead of a white person asking, like, what is it like to be black? Ask yourself, what is it like to be white? Think about all yeah. of your privileges that you have as a white person, and then and then just just think of not about having and not having any of those. 
Think about going into the store, being able to just walk in and you're fine. Instead of someone eyeing you down, following you. My thing is, I'm trying to figure out how nobody else didn't realize this before she became, what was it, the president of the NAAC? Because she went, so she went to, uh, she went to an HBCU. So, long story short, that's her whole situation, but I think that that's what white people really try to, um, should be asking themselves, what is it like to be white rather than asking me, what is it like to be black? And I feel like that was her, her, I feel like it was more curiosity than anything. That's how I feel. I feel like it was curiosity because... Honestly, Everybody. why else would you want to make your life harder? Well, it's not even want to make your life harder. It's just that, you know, a lot of white people, you know, despite the stuff that we go through, a lot of races just want to be us. A lot of them want to be us. Like, and, you know, naturally, I get it. Like, we are the first race. <laughs> we are the first species. So it's like, as far as, like, the human. So it's like, you know, all of them is nothing but a product of us. They're they're a branch off from us. <clears throat> it's natural that some of them wanna come back to the, you know, basically where it all started. I, I feel you and I, I do agree with you on that, right? But I wanna bring up a fact of like I feel like but we we all know that it's harder to be black in America than it is harder than it is. It to might be, white. be harder, but that still don't that still don't okay. deter people from. But why would you to wanna make us? your life hard like yeah, they wanna see that's the thing though. They wanna be us to a certain extent. They wanna be like us. They wanna have the cool hair, the cool dressing, the cool lingo, but the, the hip hop. But they see don't wanna that have not every black person life is hard. They do see that, but I also feel like you're chancing it. You don't know that for a they, fact. They want the you're rhythm. chancing it. They want the rhythm, but they don't want the blues. There you yes. go. There you go. That's, yeah. And that's exactly right. Yes, yeah. that's exactly because, right. So that's and it's something. like they're taking the gamble of, I might not witness the blues. That's yeah. what they take on the gamble of. But to gamble your entire life, though. Like her, literally, you got to understand, this woman went from being the head of the NAACP, the president, right? Mm. To literally braiding hair on her porch and doing welfare fraud. If she would have known that, do you think her curiosity would have been that bad for her to be like, oh, yeah, you know what? I might end up braiding hair on the porch, but, you know, let me just try this whole black thing out. Like, no, no if Shorty, if she, <coughs> excuse me, I feel like um she wouldn't have done it. I feel like you're right. People really do. People they have a curiosity. They want a taste of it, but that's why you like, I don't know. Just like, I don't it's know. like, it's like, all right, it's like hip hop music, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people won't admit it, but hip hop and R and B is the biggest genre of music of all time. No, hip hop is the, bi- the biggest because genre. Not R and B, hip hop is. They can't like, argue that. Just like, just like I told my cousin, I said, "Look, let's say it's a bunch of white people, black people, Hispanics, Chinese, Indians, whatever. We all in one room together, right? They play a couple Indian joints. Only the Indians might know it. They play a couple white joints. Some blacks might know it. Some, you know." But as soon as they play some hip hop shit, at least one person or two people from every race that's in that room is going to know who's whose song that is and what song that probably, is. Probably, Absolutely. probably what song it is because it'd be they don't know who, but they, they know what know song. Who, right, know right. What. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. and that's accurate because yeah. we know that hip hop is the number one genre of music, yeah. and we know that now hip hop is now pop culture. Yeah. But we also have to understand is that white people has always have always looked at us as entertainment. So for me, music don't count. Sports don't count. It only counts intellectually because that's where they always think we lack. We, they've always allowed us to perform. We couldn't even eat at places we were allowed to perform at. Yeah, that's we true. couldn't even use the bathroom at places we were allowed to perform. We always been like, kudos to you. You know how to sing? Cool. Do some more, Sambo. Yeah. Shuck and jive some more. Like, that's what they on with us. They don't care. They want to see us perform. But as far as intellectually, that's where I feel like it matters. We need... It, we don't, they don't, they don't, we're not looked at as intellectually people. Even though black women are the number one holder of degrees in the U.S. right now, they still, we still got people like Sexy Red and others like that who are making us the <laughs> other side. Yeah, I'm going to call it out. And we both from Missouri, but still, like, you know what I mean? I don't care. Like, still, it, 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 it she's, she makes, for me, I don't like the way she represents black women, right? It's not against her. I just don't like the way she represents black women. You know what I mean? And as she gets older, I truly f- I f- truly feel that she Speak will your straighten piece, up. Speak woman. You know, I, f- I feel like she will. She'll straighten up. And that's what, that's, that's what I said. That, I, I personally said that. I feel like when she get more comfortable, like, with the lifestyle, when she actually mm-hmm. get older and start to see things different. 
Yeah. I think that she'll actually. I don't because I don't think she realized like because she just doing her like you feel me. And I don't think that she really cares about what other people think. And I think that's that could either be the problem for every that's and that's everybody else's problem, mm-hmm. which is, you know, what I mean, and, and it's funny you said that, you know, about um, intellectually, because I feel like that's really like we smart people, of course, but like. We do things that obviously we know is obviously like the wrong thing to do. And I think mm-hmm. it was by design. It was. So like because they know that, you know, we got everything else. Mm-hmm. So it's like the only way is 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 mental warfare. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and that's yeah. It's it's something that um, you know, once you realize it, you know what I mean? Some people don't really see past 10 feet was in front of them because they never left their neighborhood too yeah. so that's a that's another problem you know yeah. that's a real one right and there. i was actually able to that's you know thing. live in a lot of different places growing up so i've seen a lot of different things and i think that's why you know i look at things different you know what i mean and you know i I've, that's my take on it you know what i mean so I agree, and I think even drawing back to Sexy Red, like in what you were saying about maturity and just tying that into what you said about environment, like she she's only doing doing her because that's what's cool in her neighborhood. That's what she's still used to. Like she's still, oh, yeah, y'all know I'm still keeping it real, blah, blah, blah. I ain't changed. You're supposed to change. If you don't change, there's a problem. They scared to change, though. They scared of it, but, it, it, but it, without change, you're only going to go but so far only going to go but so far you're going to do you're going to you're going to limit yourself at some point you know even if you feel like dang i have made it to the top there's still a top you could have reached that's even further than that had you not you know what i mean so i feel like and she also you you cut yourself out of like so much money doing doing things of that nature as well like you know how many people don't want to endorse her you know how many sponsors that she could have that she don't like you had Drake in your video. Nobody really, you you, you, yeah. you know, but this is Pound Town Girl with Drake in her video, the biggest pop star, whatever you want to say. Like, so we know that you have this, like, star power somehow. It's crazy. I didn't think about that. Yeah, we have the star power somehow, but somehow you don't have anybody really back you because they can't because of your lyrics and, and the way you carry yourself. And meanwhile, like, Ice Spice got endorsements. By everybody, and she's still bending over doing all the nasty stuff, but it's a different, it's a different type of. She's doing yeah. it in a different she's way. She's a little bit more gracious, just a little, she's right? Right. A little she bit ain't talking about right? STDs and all that. Type. Yeah, and, and and also with Ice Spice, I think what really attracted people, like from the beginning, I mean, and still, obviously, um, she had like a well, has like a natural beauty to it, right? right. Like yeah. hair. She had like the curly fro, mm-hmm. like I mean. Amazing. So I think that, you know what I mean, that's something that really, like, had her stand out. You know what I mean? I like, agree. Just just a little more gracious, you feel me? Yeah. You know? Just a tiny bit, <laughs> just right? Just a little bit. But, you but, know. Um, we can go everywhere. But tie back into Rachel Dolezal, yeah. right? So the OnlyFans thing, right? So I also, we're going to talk about that, but I also want to tie in something, uh, our next topic, which segues in, right? Mm-hmm. So... There was a woman who had her kids, they go to a private school, a private Christian school. Okay. She does OnlyFans. She's just a parent. Mm. She's just a parent. She does OnlyFans. She um, has, like, a truck, and, like, on the truck, the decal took up the whole window of the truck. The mm. decal took up the whole window. It's an OnlyFans logo, oh. right? And it has her OnlyFans on it, and I guess she's um, trying to promote. She says she makes 20000 a month off her OnlyFans. 20000 that's how she pays for her kids to go to the school, where her kids were expelled mm. because she was asked several times to take the decal off, right? And her kids now are expelled from the school, all because she does OnlyFans. Mm. And then also Rachel Dolezal losing her job at a public school due to OnlyFans. Mm. Can, we, can we be professionals and have OnlyFans? Do y'all think so? Or do y'all think, like, once you have OnlyFans, it's only OnlyFans? I think it's safe to say that, like, I mean, OnlyFans is like, is like porn, right? No, it's not all porn. No, it's, you got some people who got cooking on, it's like subscription-based okay. entertainment. Okay. Subscription-based so entertainment with no limits. Pages. So, it, essentially, if they have OnlyFans, it should depend on the content of that, right? Exactly. 
Yeah. But because, I mean, if you just looking at it, I, I feel like if you're looking at it as just as the company itself, OnlyFans, it's usually one thing that comes to mind. Associated so with So it's like if it's, I don't, I don't feel like it's really people actually delve into it enough to be like, oh, you can actually have other stuff on there. You know what I mean? So, But you know what I think is going on, though? I think that these people, like, far as the, um, the, um, the, uh, the girl who got her kids expelled, mm. um, you know, you don't got to be subscribed to OnlyFans to know what they page. Like, you can just type in their shit on OnlyFans, go right to the link, and that first page is going to tell you what, like, they page about. Mm. So, you know, um, so I feel like this. I'm going to start off with Rachel. <clears throat> I feel like if she was doing any type of adult type content on her OnlyFans, then she should have kept that as super private as possible. But then again, you got to promote yourself somehow, some way. So you're not really that private. Now, I feel like if if teachers is going to do OnlyFans, wear a mask. Like, wear some type of disguise to where as though people don't know who you are. <laughs> that way you can make your money and you can still be a teacher. But <laughs> but if you want to be uh, if you want to be an educator and have your face out in public, it's right. like it's like you 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 like, you drawing like you Batman. right? Is it just listen, Bruce Bruce Wayne ass. type beat exactly? <laughs> Honestly, and I feel like that's. The only solution. That's yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's the only, the solution. only solution, right? Now, far as mom and the kids, I feel like she was wrong because you could have that decal on your car, but if you're going to do this, also have another car where you drop your kids off at, and and you don't got to pull up to the school seeing that because you're drawing attention to yourself, you're drawing attention for other parents to be looking at you, and then. The men might like it, but you got the moms that's like, you pulling up to the school with your OnlyFans. Now, my kid that's old enough that has a phone can go to OnlyFans and look this up. And it's and a husband. Christian school. And husband. And it's a Christian school? <laughs> it's and a private husband. Christian school. Yeah, oh, right? come on. And it's a, and it's a Christian school? school. Yeah. So, yeah. She and they asked, asked her them several to, times to she, take it off. She asked for them to be. So, I feel like she made it a point to keep showing up, even if you didn't want to take it off. You, if you're making 20 bands a month off OnlyFans, you got enough money to go get you a squatter yeah. to drop them off to school every <laughs> day. Every day. Even if it ain't a squatter. Yeah. If it's just like a, a regular, like, nice little John, you could drop them off every day in the school car. But that was just out of pocket, bro. Yeah, I agree. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Ranting Raving Pod. We are so excited to present to you Mentality. Welcome to Mentality, where it is not about the gender, but more about the mental. So this week on Mentality, we're going to tap into Miss Monique. All right, um, then. Now, we tapping into Monique. I mean, I know a lot of y'all seen that she did the interview with Onk. You know what I'm saying? Onk, a.k.a. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, I know that the comedian is trying to play Onk by saying Shay Shay Gay Gay. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. All right. Onk is a real OJ, Hall of Famer in, Hall of Famer in football, and he is honestly one of the best new media personnels that's on deck out here nowadays. Like, Onk be bringing some Besides media. us. Yeah, besides mm-hmm. us. But I'm talking about, like, far as, like, sports, though. Like, Unk, Unk be bringing that fire or whatever. So, you know, much much respect to him. Much respect to Club Shay Shay and all that. And much respect to Nightcap. I'm on all that. Make sure that y'all check them out. But also, keep checking us out. So, um, but basically, though, um, Monique was on there. And, you know, Monique, uh, he asked Monique about her son. Now, now I'm, I'm not sure, if, like, many of y'all know. But Monique got a rocky relationship with, like, her son um, from what I understand from looking at all the information that I've been looking at so far is that uh, Monique's son feel like, you know, she wasn't an A1 mom like that. She was there financially, but she wasn't there in, you know, a, a physical form like as he needed her as far as, like, physical and, like, emotional. And, you know, um, a lot of people... Um, 
don't know what that's about, but a, a lot of people, they don't get that, you know, he has a point. Like, you know, I'm not taking sides when it comes to neither one of them. You know, I'm not, I'm not taking sides, but he's, he said publicly that she can even attest that, you know, it's women that raised him more than she raised him. Now, I look at it like this. No matter how busy you are in Hollywood, whether that be music, whether that be acting, whatever, you should never be too busy for your kids because at the end of the day, they all you got. When all, like, Hollywood can go away today or tomorrow. Guess who's not going to go away? The one that you birthed. They're going to be the ones I'm saying, I mean, that's going to be there. Now, I do understand being a busy parent. I, under, I understand what that's like. So a lot of times when I pray to God, I pray for stability and I pray for structure because I need that in my life in order to keep myself busy but also be in my kids' life as much as I'm being busy. And a lot of people don't understand that. So, you know, um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking sides when it comes to either one of them, but you know, I get her son's point. Whereas though, you know, it's not about the money. I don't want your money. Like I wanted my mother. And that subject to me was touchy. It was touchy to me because, you know. <sighs> Alright, I went through that with my own dad, you know. Um, and I don't even like talking about my shit like publicly, but you know, if I'm going to be real with y'all right now, I'm going to just be real with y'all. I, like, I went through that with my dad, whereas, though, you know, um, I had to tell him, I don't care about the money. I don't care if you never give me another dollar a day in my life. You can't give me what I really want, and that's time with you. I want time. I want to be able to spend time. I, I, I want to be able to go out and do things with you. I grew up, you know, not saying that my dad was a bad person. You know, it's just that... I got more financially out of him than I got time out of him. And I like I wish that I could have got the time more than the money because a kid don't give a fuck about a kid doesn't care about money. A kid cares about the time. We don't understand the money like that. We might ask for it, but we don't understand the money coming up. We want the time. The time is what matters to us. So you could do a thousand things for us financially, but what have you done for me emotionally? What have you done for me physically? That means the world to any child. So that's why I said I'm not judging Monique, but I understand where her son is coming from being a child that went through that. Now maybe my dad is like that because he admitted that he hasn't that he that he, that he never wanted kids. So maybe that's why he moves the way that he moves. Who knows? <coughs> But at the end of the day, money does not mean more than physical time. What do you guys think? I agree. Um, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, For once, I disagree. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really, I can't say anybody is right and wrong in that situation because you know, I feel like a mother's instinct is to always do the best that she can for her son. I mean, I, or I, my mom, at least, I'm pretty sure everybody, you know, uh, most people I know, uh, I think it's like a motherly thing. So especially given that situation, like, um, you know, and as a son, you know, that love his mom, he entitled to feel the way that he feel. You know what I mean? So I, I, don't, I don't think anybody, like, right or wrong in this situation, I guess, is from uh, whatever perspective. Um, but I also hope that it's not – I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's ever too late, you know, for them to, um, you know, you know, fix that, you know. Because, I mean, listen, man, you never know, like, today or tomorrow, you know what I'm saying – when the situation, I mean, and I know that for a fact because, you know, I lost my mom a couple years ago, and I think Good that's, uh, sure, and I think that's something that, like, you know, people got to, you know, keep in mind um, because sometimes, like, shit happened quick. Like, but, you quick know, mid, I kind of so. kind of see where he coming from, though, because <clears throat> he also got to deal with the fact of seeing his mom raise three other boys 
and her talk about them three other boys like as if they're like the world. So it's like you yeah. being her first, that will strike a nerve with you because you like before it was anybody, it was just us. Yeah. You know, I I agree. I agree with both of you guys, right? But I want to throw this into the mix. Just like I just want to throw into the mix that sometimes you feel like as a woman, especially, right? As a mother, as a woman, you may feel like you're working not for yourself but for your children. I'm I'm yeah, I'm missing out on time here. I'm going to make sure I spend time, right? Period. I'm going to spend time. But I may not be able to spend as much time for this amount of time, not forever, but this for for this amount of time due to the fact that I'm putting in all this work and I'm leaving something for you. All this eventually same for me because you got to think by the time Monique really came to She's very well much in her age. That's why her kids are all young. You know what I mean? Because she's her younger kids and one that she dotes on. You know, she like she, she. You know, you 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 sacrifice and you build this like so, somewhat of an empire for your kids. Like now you have connections and network for your kids. You know what I mean? Now you have financial stability for your children. You have a, a potential to make generational wealth for your children because you have now wealth now. So you can definitely make it generational. So, I mean, I'm not saying she's playing it like that because you know for. Just, rumors she's hard to work with all this and that i'm just saying like those are the potential things that you're providing let's say if you have a business or you know things that you're your services that you're providing um you can pass these skills and these things down to your kids right and you can you have to build but it takes time to build it and so as much as i understand his perspective too where it's like you have to spend the time with your kids because they need that more than the money but i don't know because how if we spend the time together in the box like how like you know what i mean like you got to look at it yeah i get that but it's like as a parent you gotta find Sometime, the time right? you have to find it. I just feel like, like it won't even be as if much it's time even if it's time. one day you got because I understand mm-hmm. entertainment where I understand actors and shit like you excuse my language but it's like you gotta you gotta find some type of wiggle room you gotta find it because yeah. it's like the thing is that's important so it's like all right for me like you know I'm busy a like 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 honestly I be busy to the point where it's though it irks my soul sometimes but then mm-hmm. I got to say I can't complain when I ask for this plate I ask for this plate so I can't complain now that I got all this on my plate so you know it's like but you know like with me I try to at least take like you know 2 days out the week and you know be with my kids you know um like even if you know, like you know, I just go stop by their crib and just go sit in there with them for like two hours, like that type of stuff. It means the world to them because it's like, all right, you know, you at least thought about me enough to come and at least check on me. And it's like, you know, like they don't know that, but it's like they they just feel your presence. And it's like kids, that's all they know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. Like, I think maybe you heard. Like, maybe you misunderstood what I was saying. I think those things are absolutely necessary. Okay. But what I'm saying is that like the same amount of time you want, like one or two days, three days, that ain't hard to do, right? But I feel like the amount of time that pe- that kids may want their parents around, they're not going to get that if you have an entrepreneur parent or if you have a parent who's trying to build something for you. You're not going to get as much time, and but you have to. Some time is necessary. That's why like I half be and half, However that, you want to do, some time is definitely necessary. That's why I understand that J and B, they, they was bringing blue with them everywhere because it's like... Right, you because know, they both, like, they don't yeah. even have the other parent to, at home. Or, so right, it's so, like, you got to, come on. Yeah, it's difficult. And, like, it's hard finding that balance, but... And it's hard sometimes you feel guilty one way or the other. Yeah. Because if you, if you skip out on something... For your kids, you damn, you definitely feeling guilty about that, right? But if you if we, if you just like, hey, you know, let's stay a little longer at the park today. But you know, you miss an op- a business opportunity, you're kicking yourself in the behind for that too. So it really is like, it's such a hard thing because you're like, oh, this could have, this could have, because you never know what play is gonna right. be a play. Right. And everybody, like we I, we say this all the time, like everybody is one video away, one song away, one show yep. away, one yep. one introduction away from taking it to the next level. So yep. like it's so hard. You never want to miss things that you that are you know what I mean? It's just one step. You never Very know when true. it's gonna happen. Especially when you work and consistently you put in work and you have so many different yeah. avenues. Like I know for a fact I could there's so many different ways I can be uh I don't even want to say discover, but I can get opportunities presented to me, whether it be through pink drinks, whether it be through words of wisdom, whether it be ranting raven, whether it be my music, whether it be events, whether it be uh, the book I'm working, whether whatever I'm doing, like there's so many ways, like how, who wants to cut the check and for how much and for what? 
Like, uh-huh. who wants to invest in me? Yeah. Because I got, uh-huh. what you want to invest in? Right. Oh, yeah, I do nails too. Like, it'd be stuff like that, whatever. I do so much. Like, who, like, that's how I look at it. Like, what company wants to sponsor me? That's how I'm looking. I'm looking at the bigger picture. So if I'm already thinking at my state and I miss one opportunity, is look, I'm looking like that could have been the one. You and you'll and you'll really wreck your brain thinking like, was that the one? Like what? Yeah. And but then you will literally like it will change your whole mood if you miss something with your kids. Yeah, you'll be depressed. True. So it really, it really all really just depends. Like, um. I don't know, but that was a good mentality. Shout out to Monique. Shout out to her son. I definitely feel for her son, too. I feel for her. And I hope they find healing. I hope they do the work. And I hope everything ends up okay. So for our next topic, we are going to get into um, an age difference, right? So this is how, this is a very interesting subject. Um, so I want to put it to you like this, right? So what do you, so you think a 10 year age or let's say like a 10 to 15 year age range age difference between in a relationship right and when you're older it really don't seem that deep like someone who's 45 being with someone who's 30 that's not that abnormal we see that right, right. but then when you think about the time when the 45 year old when you think about the time that the 30 year old was born the 45 year old was 15 you see what I'm saying at the time that the 45-year-old was 15, the 30-year-old was what? I mean, if the, if the, if the, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I just messed it up. I messed it up, newborn. y'all. Yeah. yeah, it's like newborn, <laughs> newborn. So it's like, when you think about age differences, right? Does it matter on mm-hmm. how, how much age? And mm-hmm. then also, does it matter about the sex? Mm-hmm. Because the question really is, what is a male cougar? What is Man. the equivalent to a male cougar? And I have an answer. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna let y'all. I'm gonna let y'all get it together, hmm. right? But I have one answer that I believe. I just I don't know, but I want to hear if y'all got something else for me because I'm not sure if this is actually like the answer. This is the only logical thing I can come up with based on today's society. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to our first episode on YouTube. Make sure y'all click that right now. Right. Today's society. Hmm. All right. Um. Age definitely matter. Um, in my opinion, it does. Definitely matters. <laughs> niggas matters. be wild though. Niggas be wild. Like, like niggas be wild. Does sex matter though? Because I feel like women get a pass, right? I mean, women don't get a pass because I mean, all this shit a, is wild. If, if women don't get a pass, what's a male cougar? A male cougar is all right. Let's say if she twenty, he if he forty. That's no. A what's cougar. the name for a male cougar? I don't know. I never. I never. I never knew of them having a name. Right, which is which is already implied that but, it's a double standard. But the but the but but the fact is is that it is a such thing as guys being too old for women. Like women don't. And there's women such don't thing as women being too old for, for guys. Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. What I'm like, but yeah. it's like you know, guys don't view it that way which be crazy like but this been going on for years though and it's like it's wild like yo listen i swear i don't want the pod to think that my family just went through some ish but it has like like and i'm just an honest person my grandpa was a wild guy if you ask me he was wild it was a 20 year gap between him and my grandma and i'm just now finding this out and like it's wild to me because it's like who allowed that? Who allowed a sixteen-year-old to be with a thirty-six-year-old man? That's wild. Like that's that's like borderline pedophile nowadays. But your grandparents, what age? Like what? I mean, uh, what um, what years are we talking? Like this was way back in the day. So it was like I feel like it was legal more back in the day. Yeah, it was. And to sign and off on like your parents to sign you over. Bro, my right? my great grandmother, she got married. I think they said at like eleven. Mind you, she mm-hmm. she passed when she was like a hundred over a hundred years old. This nah, was back bless. in like the early two thousand. It was bless like the her. early two thousands. So like she was born like the the I think like the nineteen hundreds, something like that. So back then that was like regular. Like that was like regular. Like which right. is like now that you know And and, and, and <laughs> it's wild though still when you like think about it, cause like and it's like I had to like tell my family, I'm like, y'all, y'all say the age difference and none of y'all not expressing how wild it is. I'm like, yeah. 
They like, well, that's how it was back in that time. It don't matter. It still was wild because, yeah. like, guys is getting locked up for that nowadays. Yeah. Well, think about all the other stuff that was acceptable back then, too, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, that was, that was just time. a tip of the iceberg. Like, that color salads. You know what I'm saying? Like, different we couldn't time. even... You know, we couldn't even use the same toilets. None of right. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, we, like, we 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 came yeah. from some wild times. And as so, like as the times come on, people get freakier. Let's be clear. Exactly. Like yeah. they be coming up with more freaky stuff to do. So it wasn't the same type of like, oh, we really in love, you know, type right. of thing. Now it's like, yeah, I want this still six year old. Like they pray. But you know what it like, is though. Crazy. You know what it like, is. It's just that nowadays it's like this, right? The younger females be looking older than what they should it's look. In the, it's in that and, milk. And, and 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 it's a and it's a bad joint. Like I be, like I was victim to that back when I was like nineteen. Like I was victim like I was I was literally hitting Shorty was like fourteen, fifteen, and on God I didn't know. Like I can honestly say this on camera because like for a fact she can even vouch for me that I didn't know. Like, she was lying, saying that mm-hmm. she was older than what she was. Mm-hmm. And I didn't find out until she was, like, 22. When she said her age, I'm like, wait. I'm, like, doing, like, the age gap. I'm like, I'm like, what you mean you only 22? And, like, she just started laughing. And I'm like, why are you laughing? And it's like she came out and just, like, was honest. Like, she just broke it all down. Like, yeah, I was actually this age. When I'm like, oh, like. So I was saying a young, like, I'm 19 here. So I'm like 14, 15, But it's like she didn't look that age at all. She did not look that age. Her body didn't look that age. She didn't and and like she was that age. Like she was like a grown woman with it, bro. So it's like when she told me this, I was taken back. I was like really like honestly, I felt some type of way. And it's like we argued a little bit, but it's like after a while, I just got over it because I'm like I had to realize that women been doing this type of stuff for years. But it made me, it still made me feel some type of way because I'm like, I wouldn't have took it there with you had I known you was that young and me being 18, 19. I wouldn't have did that. Yeah, I, you know, working in, first off, that's crazy. Um, that's, right. That's, that's a crazy situation. Right. Um, I work at a restaurant, and it's funny because I always see a lot of, it be a lot of like, uh, like sugar babies. I guess they call them that. <laughs> so it'd be a lot of, you know, so it really do, you know, when you was talking about the Mel Cougar thing, you know, because you always see like the, the always see 19, 20 year olds with, with 40, 45, 50 year old men. Sometimes I just see two of them, 19, 20. Mm-hmm. Bro, I done went to school 45, with chicks that was doing that. Old. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, um, it's just crazy, man, because it's like, you just got to wonder, like, how did this come about? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like, fellas pulling up to the high school, you know. picking up chicks. They in they, they in they, they in their mid-30s, pulling up to the high school, picking up chicks. And I'm like, that's when I really witnessed that. It was really crazy seeing chicks that's 17, 16, 17, mess with these old heads. I don't know a girl, I don't know not one girl who doesn't at least know a girl who was messing with an older guy in high school. That's how common it is. Oh. I'm not ever going to say it's right. I'm never going to condone it or anything it's, like that, it's, but it's, it's very, very it's common. Crazy. And I remember girls even lying about their age to get old. Like you, I re- these things, these are things that women do. They have done from the beginning of time. Um, and and men fall for it very often. Like I mean, it, if it, they're convincing enough, they fall for it. It just is what it is. Um, but it, it, it's terrible because it really does a lot of times put men in like bad positions. Um, and like as far as the sugar baby thing, so before we, because I'm gonna give y'all the answer to what's a male cougar. I'm gonna give y'all the answer, right? But because um, there's only one answer, and it's so messed up because there's a double standard with this like this age gap thing. If there's a double standard, the double standard really stems from women when so when women become older and they become oh you better get you a young man isn't that a normal thing you hear you, you probably heard an aunt or something like you yeah. better get you a, a young man so there's oh, no problem cougars, they be on it. there's no problem when it's a woman looking for a younger man but when it's an older man looking for a younger woman now we have an issue 
And now, and now, when a woman does it, it's no long, it's not, it's no longer grooming, it's no longer ma- ma- manipulative, it's no longer all the things that it actually is. And so, we can say overall, what is a male cougar? A pedophile. That's it. Facts. That's what, and I'm not saying that that's like what it is, but in, in terms of how we look at things and how society is, that's the only thing you could compare those two to, because they call men who are older, preying on someone younger, a pedophile. But they don't say that for women. They call them cougars. Yeah. So there's a double standard. But I wanted to add to the sugar baby thing. This is really funny. So um, I was researching the Who the F Did I Marry um, series so we could talk about it here. Um, But as I was going through videos about that, I saw the sugar baby story. It was a quick one, so I watched it. It was a two-part. It's the sugar baby. She she had this um, old, rich, white guy. He was... I mean, he was tricking his life away. Yeah. Like, he was everywhere. Like, it was just... And she would, like, document their day-to-day on TikTok, right? Oh, man. Like, she was living the life. She started acting funny towards her friends and family. She started really feeling herself. Like, no, we never break it up. We locked it. Like, she was doing the most, right? So, he keeps begging her for months. Oh, had, like, please, I want you to have my baby. I want you to have my baby. Mind you, he's way older. He's like... Let's just say, for, for context-wise, let's say he's, like, 54. In between 53 and 55, and she's in between 20 and 25. Okay. Right? So it's a big, it's a significant um, age difference. She's legal, though. She's legal? She's legal. We're not. She's grown. She's grown, but she wants to be a sugar baby, right? So she's like, as she wants to be taken care of. So she cooks, she cleans, whatever. He takes care of all the bills. He takes her out all the time. Oh, that's so wife. She gets whatever, everything she wants. That's what she thought. That's so wife. That's what she thought. That's what mm. she thought. Mm. So he keeps begging her, have my baby, please, have my baby. I'm going to take care of you. You know, I already take care of you, but I want to take care of the baby. She gets pregnant. He starts acting crazy. Starts acting completely different, don't know her. So she ends up going to have the baby. She had to, went through her whole pregnancy by herself. Worn into the sugar babies. Do the whole pregnancy by herself. Had the baby. In the hospital, this man comes the day she's about to be released. This man comes to bring the base for the car seat, right? They get into an argument because he was waiting in a line for food on his way there, and she ended up not wanting anything. So he started getting mad. Mm. Not only does he get there, start saying that she's going to call CPS on her. She don't need the baby. He wants to take the baby away from her. All she wants a baby for is a check. Right? Then he leaves with the base in the car seat, so basically they can't leave. Because I don't know if you know, if you ever have a baby when you live, before you leave the hospital, if you, unless you have that base or a car seat that doesn't need it, require a base, it's got to be a certain type of car seat the baby can leave the hospital or they will not let you leave. Um, so he took that and he left them. She had to Uber home. She had to Uber home. So when you, when you, with these sugar baby situations, they don't always end up, y'all get, see, the problem is a lot of these women, they get in these sugar baby situations, they love in life, and these men are capping you up. Oh, yeah, you know, I want you to have my baby. I want, to, I want you to be my wife. He would have married you already if he had that intention. He would have already married Sex. you. You already, you are, he would have already locked you in. And if you, if that's what you wanted, you should have made that known. Like, if you want to be married, that's what I'm going to give this to the ladies. If y'all want to be married, state your claim when you first start talking to old boy. Let him know that, not that he has Sex. to propose anytime soon, but let him know Sex. that marriage is something that you really want. You're not sure. Maybe you do want or you don't want. Let somebody know so that way there's no confusion because that's what she wanted. She had the baby thinking that was going to keep him. Having a baby never keeps a man. It only causes never. issues when it's not. Like, if it's not an intentional, we want to create a child together, it's if not going to work you, out. he wants you, he wants you. If he wants you, he wants you. If he does not, he does not. Nothing will make somebody who don't want to stay, stay. And um, that's just a word to advice for y'all. And a word to advice to the sugar babies. A lot of times you'll get in these situations, ships not realizing these men want you for fun. Like, they want you to be out, have somebody cute on their arm, y'all drinking, y'all, you know, all this and that. Y'all can have a good time, but when it comes down to who they're going to bring home to meet their fa- their their, par- their family, who are they going to want to spend, like, holidays with, who they want to, like, really be with for the rest of their life, you're not the person. And don't get let the glitz and the glam and a couple of dollars fool you. All right, guys, so that was uh, this episode of Ranting and Raving Pod. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube at Stereotype Radio, and we'll be back next Wednesday. Shout out to Henny G for popping out. You already know. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Where can they find you at, Henny J? Uh, Follow me on Instagram, uh, Henny G, two underscores. Um, And, yeah, just stay tuned for more content. The luck's coming soon. Hey. I'm your boy, Too Cocky Dre, a.k.a. Mr. Keep It Cocky.